I'm a hydrogeologist. My model in life is think out of the box. My name, Marcel. My experience, groundwater and soil contaminations. I'm the creator of GeoRGB. A channel of geographic information systems, GIS, geology, hydrogeology and contamination. The purpose, the objective, the goal, the intention, the target, the desire. Share my experience and acknowledge to create eight points of discussion. The GeoRGB community. Promote the use of free and open source software. A free digital society. Provide technical advice to environmental companies an opportunity for professional growth. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In this occasion I'm presenting the geostatistical analysis course related to the creation of groundwater flow maps with Kragen interpolation. We are going to be working with R and R Studio for the geostatistical analysis and graph design and with Quantum GIS for the final map edition. We are going to compare the results we get with the geostatistical analyst extension of RGIS to see how we can get the same results. However, RGIS is a private software, but R, R Studio, and Quantum GIS are open source and free software. I am going to create a series of video tutorials where you are going to learn how to create a Kriegen interpolation successfully. Unfortunately, Kriegen interpolation is a kind of black box where most of the people just press the button next without understanding what is the math behind the Kriegen method. However, in R, there is no bottom for next. In these tutorials, I am going to explain with examples, step by step, the spatial analysis methodology, where I am going to be talking about exploratory data analysis, experimental semi-variogram, model semi-variogram, cross-validation, Kriegen interpolation, and also, at the end, we are going to be working with the map edition with Quantum GIS and also reporting results. This is the fifth video of our geostatistical analysis course and today we are going to see how to calculate a point of information in our semivariogram cloud. Also, we are going to talk about the parameters we can see in a semivariogram graph. These parameters are the seal, the range and also the nugget and we are going to see how the nugget effect can impact in our results. We are going to talk about the directional semivariogram on our map and also in our studio and we are going to calculate the experimental semivariogram for a different directions. We are going to see also how we can build a bin to interpret our data according different directions. We are going to be talking about the anisotropy of the data and also how we can interpret the variance map or variography. At the end, we are going to place a bin on a map and we are going to see how the lags work according for the different directions of the bin. Let's go to do it. At the previous video, we created a semivariogram cloud with the data related to the groundwater elevation. Then, we created a graph where we can select a point of data from our semi-variogram cloud and plot that data in an X and Y graph to recognize the pair of piezometers it represents. Then, we exported the semi-variogram cloud data to a spreadsheet to calculate manually the experimental semi-variogram for the first four lag distances to have a better understanding what is the relation between the semi-variogram cloud 
and the experimental semi-variogram. Then we created a graph where we plotted the semi-variogram cloud, the experimental semi-variogram for the first four lag distances. And we saw that in order to calculate the experimental semi-variogram for each lag distance, we have to do the average of the semi-variance and also the average for the distance for all the observations that are located and each specific lag. Then we created a graph where we plotted the pair of piezometers for each lag distance. Also, we created a graph for the experimental semi-variogram with a lag distance of 15 meters. We work on the parameters for the construction of a beam. At the end, we saw how an omnidirectional beam works on the map to identify the lag distances. Remember that if you miss this video, you can hit at the card located at the top right corner of your screen, over here. At the previous video, we was calculating the experimental semi-variogram, is these red dots. But I didn't show you how to calculate the one of these points related to the semi-variogram cloud. Now let's go to calculate this point. This point is the number one, two, three, four, five from the lag distance. Let's see how we can calculate this one. Then first we have to calculate the distance for the piezometers. To do that one, we are going to use is here analysis tools and it's called distance matrix. Then just press here, select the data is where we have the data is going to be this one. Then for the input unique ID field, we are going to choose the P is the piezometers. Then for the target point layer, we are going to select also again data and here again the piezometers. Then let's go to run close and that one is going to generate a new shape file layer then let's go to the attribute table and here let's go to classify all these points according to the distance then here we have the shorter distance and here we have the maximum distance between the piezometers as you can see the information for example if we take the first two you are going to see the first pair is piezometer 53 with piezometer 7 and then we have here piezometer 7 with piezometer 53 and we have the same distance that is because both of them are the same but in opposite direction but as I explained at the previous video we are going to consider just one of these ones according to the azimuth distance then as we said for the one we want to calculate is the number 5 then is going to be the number nine and ten it's going to be this one then okay move this one a little bit then to recognize these uh these piezometers on the map we are going to make a little bit of zoom here we have 11 and 6 then the pair of piezometers we are going to calculate is this one. Then if you click right on your mouse and then press flash feature, you are going to see how these ones flash. You see there? Perfect. That's the way we can uh, know what is the distance between all the pair of piezometers. In this case is 15.233. Now let's go to calculate the semi-variance for this uh, pair of piezometers. I did already and I have the result here. We are going to use this equation here for the semi-variance for the pair of piezometers 11 and 6. We have here the groundwater elevation for piezometer 11 and also the groundwater elevation for piezometer 6. And the distance between these these uh, two piezometers is 15.2335. That's the distance we calculated here with quantum GIS. Then let's go to make this equation. We are going to calculate gamma and gamma is depending on the distance, this distance. 
then we are using one and a half for the number of pairs we are going to put just one because we are working just with one pair there is no summation because we are working just with one pair of piezometers then for this term that this term is the tail is going to be 95.011 is this number here and for the head we are going to place this number is this number over here then the final result is this one and that's the semivariance that's the gamma okay then let's go to plot these two values on that graph for the distance 15.233 and for the semivariance 0 0.48 then if we go to the graph you are going to see that the distance is 15.233 over here and for the semivariance is 0 0.47 okay it's that one that's the way we can calculate a uh, a point in our semi-variogram cloud. Other thing I would like to talk about it, it's related with the explore data and why we have the semi-variogram cloud in this section. Let me open this one, change for the parameter of groundwater. And here, let's go to change the lag for 15 meters and the number of lags 30 just to cover all the area. Now I'm going to copy this graph and open with this software. This graph is going to provide us a lot of information in the first stage of the investigation. In this specific case, we have this shape here that is indicated already that there is a trend here. Because when we have a cloud of points that there is no trend, we are going to have a distribution of the points more randomly and cover most of this area. As we have this area very clear, all this area, that indicates that we have a trend. Also, this graph is going to help us to recognize uh, outliers. For example, if you have some points over here, is going to indicate that there is a apiosometer with a groundwater elevation that it's pretty weird and create this kind of cloud over here. Also, if we have, for example, a, a lack of points over here, that's indicating that the, the samples are not really homogeneous because we have a lack of information over here. It's not this case. And that's the reason because we have the semi-variogram cloud at the section of explore data here. Before to talk about the directional semi-variogram, I would like to talk a little bit about the components of a semi-variogram. This graph over here. The main three components are the seal, the nugget, and the range. But also we can talk about the partial seal. It's this one here. The nugget is known as a C sub zero. The partial seal is known as a C1. And the seal is known as a C. Then C it's equal to C sub 1 plus C sub 0. The seal is equal to the variance of our observations. In this case, the groundwater elevation. And it's going to be 1 if the data are normal square. But we didn't did any transformation in our example. Then we are going to assume that the variance is the one we calculated with our script over here. This variance here for our data and for the groundwater is this one. And that's the value we plot here. And it represents our seal in our graph. The range is the distance at the which the variogram reaches the seal. From here, in this case, it's going to be from here to here. But with the data we are working now, we don't have any range because of the trend. But when we work with the residuals, 
after removing the trend, we are going to see how our experimental uh, semivariogram is going to reach the seal and the semivariance is going to stabilize. The next parameter is the, the nugget. The nugget could be associated with a sum of a geological structure, but in this case, if we have any nugget, could be related with instrumental errors. For example, the probe to measure the groundwater doesn't work properly, or maybe also with a technical error. The person who was measuring the groundwater took a wrong measurement. Also could be related with a high variance and also would, could be related with a poor location of the groundwater walls. Let's go to talk a little bit more about the nugget effect. Let's go to change the graph. Let's go to use this one where we have the walls. If we have two walls that they are very close each other, for example, let's go to suppose that we have this wall here and the next wall it's over here and they are very close, right? Then the distance between these two points is going to be close to zero. And the groundwater elevation for, for this pair of piezometers has to be pretty similar because they are very, very close each other. Then what we are going to have on the graph, let me show you here. If we have the distance, it's very, uh, short between the pair of piezometers, the distance is going to be close to zero. And also for the semivariance for this equation over here, as, as the tail and the head are going to be very close to each other, this value is going to be close to zero. Then we are going to have in this graph the point for the pair of piezometers over here, close to zero. Let me change the color, close to zero, right? but it doesn't has to be always like that maybe you are going to have values over here where the piezometers are very close each other because the distance of each piezometer but we are going to have a variance where it's greater than zero and what could be the reason of that one as we said previously that could be related with uh, error with the instrumentation. Maybe the probe doesn't work properly and the measurement of the groundwater is wrong. Could be also an error related with the person who is taking the measurements. Could be also uh, related with the construction of the piezometers. Something is wrong. Maybe the piezometers are screened in a different aquifer and that's the reason because they are giving us different groundwater elevation and also could be related with a high semivariance. I'm going to explain now this concept. I'm going to change this one. For example, let's go to suppose that the groundwater elevation, we have the data over here, over here, over here, over here, and over here. Then our model has to do something like that, right? Then in a short distance, let's go to suppose the distance is from here to here. In a very short distance, the variance for the groundwater is changing a lot because of the high semivariance of the data. And that distance could be, I don't know, 10 meters. And then in our graph, it's going to happen the same, right? That a distance of, for example, this one here is around 50 meters, maybe around 10 meters. We are going to start to have values over here because of the high semivariance. Then when we do the average for this area for, for a lack of, for example, 10 meters, we are going to have that the average point for the semivariance and also for the distance is going to be over here, right? Then when we try to fit the mathematical model, the model is going to, let me change the color, is going to intersect the 
the y axis over here that it's not zero, then we are going to have a nugget effect. Other explanation, let me remove this one, could be related with the location of the walls. Let's go to see this one. Let me remove these ones. Now let's go to suppose that we have this groundwater elevation. This line over here is the surface. And we have all this groundwater depth for different piezometers. This is the distance from the surface to the uh, groundwater. And then our real model is doing something like that. But what happened, maybe that is we have just two piezometers, this one and this one. And then we are thinking that our model is doing something like that. But the red one is not the reality. The reality is the black one. Then we have a couple of piezometers and the semi-variance for this pair of piezometers has a big value even for a, for a distance of, for example, 10 meters. Change this one here. For example, from here to here, we have 10 meters. And we miss all this information at the middle. And then the difference between this point and this point is big and they make a big semi-variance. For example, in this case, if we have this piezometer and also maybe this piezometer, the difference between the points is not going to be that big. But as we have a poor location of the piezometers, the difference is really big and they make also a nugget effect. Then we have to assume that the number of samples or number the observations is going to depend on how our data is going to change at the space, right? It's going to depend about our semivariance. As bigger is, is the uh, semivariance, higher has to be the number of samples. And, and as flat is our data, we are going to need less samples because with a couple of samples, we can represent all this area here. But to represent all this area, even ball has the same distance, we, we need to have more data to have a real model. There are a lot of examples that can cause a nugget effect. I explained just a few of them, just to have an idea about this kind of effect. Be aware that the ideal X scenario is where we have a nugget effect close to zero or if we have a nugget effect, this nugget effect has to be very small if we compare with the partial seal. I mean, for a ideal interpolation, we want to have a big partial seal compared with the nugget effect. If the nugget effect is really big compared with the partial seal, we cannot do a Kriegen interpolation because the data we have has a lot of noise or a lot of uh, semi-variance and then we cannot interpolate. Then the best option is to have nugget close to zero and also a big range. That's the ideal scenario for Kriegen interpolation. Other important concept with the components of a semi-variogram is the spatial correlation of the data and when the data is correlated and when the data is uncorrelated. And that limit comes from the range. The range marks the area where our data is spatially correlated and where our data is uncorrelated. And that's the key of the experimental semivariogram. And the reason we can do Krugin interpolation because of the spatial correlation of our data. Then we have to assume that this part of the graph is the geostatistics because the data is spatially correlated. But the other side, the uncorrelated area, we can talk just the statistics. There is no an spatial component because there is no relation between the data. Okay. 
Now let's go to see the, how we can create a directional semi variogram. Let's go to suppose that we want to calculate the experimental semi variogram with a direction of 45 degrees. That direction is going to be the azimuth direction and is with respect to the north. Then here we have an angle of 45 degrees with respect to the north. Then that one is going to be the direction we want to calculate the experimental semi variogram. Each of these squares is 15 meters. Then for the first one, over here we are going to have lag 1, over here we are going to have lag 2, over here we are going to have lag 3. And for example, lag 3 is going to be 45 meters. Then let's go to place this one on a piezometer to see what happened. Let's go to start with piezometer 8. Then 8 is going to be the origin and here is going to be zero. Then here we have 15, 30, 45, and so on. And now we want to see how many piezometers are on the line. That is going to indicate that piezometer eight and piezometers, for example, three, are making a direction of 45 degrees. But in this case, as piezometer three is not on the line, this one has a different angle with respect of piezometer A. As you can see, in this case, we don't have any piezometer that is on the line. Then we have to assume that in this case, we cannot calculate the experimental semi-variogram with a direction of 45 degrees from the piezometer 8. Let's go to place this one in a different piezometer. For example, piezometer 21. Again, in piezometer 21, we don't have any piezometer that is located on the line. Piezometer 12. Okay, in piezometer 12 also happened the same because this one is a little bit off. The center is not exactly on the line. Let's go to see piezometer 19. On piezometer 19, we have piezometer 9 that is located in a direction of 45 degrees with respect of piezometer 19. Then we can say that this pair of piezometers has an angle of 45 degrees. What happened in this case is that piezometer 9, it's not exactly located at the lag number 3, that it's 40, uh, 45 meters. It's a little bit farther. Then we have to try to create something that allow us to have a tolerance to have some of our data located in an angle of, for example, in this case, 45 degrees. When we are taking samples, for example, in a systematic way, because you can imagine, for example, if you want to calculate the concentration of a mineral in a specific direction, maybe you go to the field and then you decide to pick up the samples every 15 meters, right? Then you are going to pick up one sample here, one sample here, one sample here, and so on, right? And in this case, you can use a line because you know you have all the points on a line of 45 degrees and also for each lag because you took the samples every 15 meters but when your data it's no place like systematically then you can use a different system and now i'm going to show you what we can do to create the experimental semi variogram in a specific direction when the points are not on the line to calculate the directional semi variogram, we are going to use beams. Then the first thing we have to decide what is going to be our beam direction. The beam direction is the direction we are going to calculate the directional semi variogram. Then this direction has to be with respect to the north as is known as an azimuth angle. In this case, it's going to be around 45 degrees. Then we have to decide what is going to be our lag distance. In this case, we are going to use a lag distance of 15 meters. 
then here is going to be 15 and here is going to be 30 and so on here is going to be the origin and it's going to be zero as you know the chances of having a point of observation exactly in this location it's very low what we are going to add is a lag tolerance with this lag tolerance if we have a point that is located over here we are going to consider that this point belongs also to lag 2 in this case the lag tolerance used to be the half of the lag distance then in order to create our beam we have to uh, establish some limits over here and also over here that's the reason we are going to use the next parameter the azimuth angle the azimuth angle is the direction from the center of the beam to this direction and also to this direction the azimuth tolerance used to be the half of the the azimuth angle for the beam direction in this case for example if the azimuth angle for the beam direction is 45 degrees the azimuth tolerance is going to be 22.5 in this direction and 22.5 in this direction but with the azimuth angle we don't have enough limits to define our beam because the area is covering but by, by this angle is increasing and increasing and increasing and then we need some limitations on the side that's the reason because we are going to use the parameter bandwidth that is going to help us to make some limits in this direction and also in this direction that is going to be perpendicular to the beam direction and then at the end we are going to have a beam and the area specify for each lag then all the points inside this area are going to belong to lag one and all the points located in this area are going to belong to lag two and so on then all the parameters related with the beam creation are the let me remove all these ones are the bandwidth azimuth angle lag tolerance lag distance and azimuth angle however lag tolerance it's not a parameter that you can add in all the softwares just in some of them and also the same for bandwidth we cannot add these parameters for example in R studio and also we cannot add these parameters on on our map well i believe bandwidth can be added on our map but but no lag tolerance Okay, now let's go to see how it works in our map and also in our studio. Let's go to select the parameter we want is groundwater. Here we want a lag size of 15 meters and we want to cover all the area. Then we need 30 lakhs at least to have here 450 and 450 is the maximum extension from here to here. Then when you select this option, you are going to have the option to manipulate all these parameters here. That's the angle for the bin. This one is the angle for the tolerance and this one is for the bandwidth then as you can see here we have already our bin and you can manipulate the bin from here and also you can change the parameters over here as you can see when we are moving the bin the number of points is changing according to the points are inside of each bin for each lag then as you can see for for 45 well, let me change this one to 45 for 45, there is no too much points of information because as you can see here, if you take, for example, piezometer 44 with an angle of 45, you can see there is no too much information. The same for piezometer 13, for example, or piezometer 32, there is no much information for an angle of 45. Where you have the maximum information is for an angle of 135. 135, as you can see here, we have a lot of points of information is this direction over here now let's go to see how it works on our studio i'm going to copy here first let's go to start with directional semi variogram for the semi variogram cloud as you see we added this parameter here 
this one is the lag distance 15 meters this one is the tolerance absimut this one is the angle for the bin and this one we are going to change for 450 that is the the distance for our graph this one is the data where it is and this one is the formula we are going to use and that's the script we are going to use remember the, if you want to know more things about how it works you can put here a question mark and then run this script and you are going to see here all the options you have for for this script right the cutoff the width the alpha what it means everything then let's go to run this one from here to here let's go to run all this together and that's the graph we are going to see as you can see as i indicated that one it's not an experimental one it's just for the cloud of points for an angle of zero degrees and with a tolerance azimut of 22.5 okay and for a distance of oh, the distance is 450 but it doesn't take any value the maximum value we can get is until here because of the of the bin doesn't make any sense to make the graph 450 meters now we are going to see the next one it's going to be this one the directional semi-variogram for the experimental semi-variogram and what we are going to do is calculate the angle for a four different bin directions it's going to be for a zero degrees for 45 for 90 and for 135 we are not going to do 480 because it's going to do it's going to be the same as a zero degrees then we are going to use a tolerance angle a tolerance azimut is this is this angle here the azimut tolerance is going to be 22.5 and we are going to use a cut off the distance is going to be 400 meters 450 meters and the lag distance is going to be 50 meters and we are going to create an object that is going to be variogram 2 that is going to appear here in our list then let's go to run this one and now let's go to plot and this graph is very interesting i'm going to make this one bigger and as you can see for a distance of a zero degrees there is no too much points of information if we see on the map even for 45 there is no too much points of information you can see the data gets just until 200 meters and here also until 200 meters if we check the map here you are going to see that when we're trying to calculate the the experimental semi-variogram for a direction of zero degrees the maximum distance is going to be 200 meters right because there is not too much information in this direction the same happened with you are trying to do for 45 degrees there is not too much information in this direction then where we have the maximum information it's for a direction of 90 degrees because we reach more than 400 meters and also for 135 and that one is what you can see on the map for a 90 degrees for example if you take this point you are going to see that here we have a distance that it's more than 400 meters and the biggest one it's for a direction of 135 is where we have more points of information and that's what we can see on this graph now let's go to close this one and let's go to make a nice graph with ggplot is the next script then let's go to run all this one and that's the nice graph i created for the fourth direction as you can see here that's the azimuth direction from 0 135 45 90 and i a plot also the variance here but in this case as i said previously we don't have any seal because of the trend 
Now let's go to see how we can create a variography. Let's go to close this one and let's go to paste over here. There is two ways to call this uh, graph we are going to do now as variography or also as a variogram map. As we used to do, there are two different ways to make that map. Let's first let's go to run this script here. What is the characteristics here? We have the black distance of 15 meters and the cutoff for 450 meters. Let's go to May zoom here. Here at the legend, we have the semi variance, and here at the graph, we have the semi variance according to the distance. Now let's go to make the same graph, but with ggplot. That is going to be more nice. Let's go to run this one. And we have the same information, but with a nice graph. Now let's go to talk a little bit about how we can interpret the information in this graph. In order to interpret the variography or semi-variogram map, we are going to use the experimental semi-variogram we calculated for the different directions. We are going to plot in this graph the range distance. Remember that the range is the distance from zero to the point where the experimental semi-variogram reaches the seal and the seal is equal to the variance, is this pink line over here. As we have a trend in our data, the experimental semi-variogram doesn't get flat at the variance but we are going to interpret the data anyway. What we want to see is if our data is anisotropic or isotropic. And this information can be resolved in this graph. As you can see, we have different range distance for each direction. And that's its indica indicative that our data is anisotropic. Now let's go to plot the information over here. First, we want to plot the major axis. In this case, it's related with the range for the direction of 90 degrees. As you can see, the, this experimental semi-variogram reached the seal at the distance of 250 meters. Then we have to plot here a line from zero to 250 in a direction of 90 degrees is this line over here, 250 in a direction of 90 degrees. Then we want to plot the minor axis. The minor axis is always perpendicular to the major axis. Then it's going to be the distance for a zero degrees. In this case, we have to check where the experimental semi-variogram for a direction of zero degrees hit the, the seal. In this case, it's going to be around 140 meters. This one is 150 and it's going to be over here approximately. Then let's go to plot a line with a direction of zero degrees. That is going to be 140 meters. This line here. And with these two lines, now we are in conditions to create the ellipse. Then in this case, we can see that our data has a behavior that indicates that it's anisotropic. For example, if we have the range distance that for all directions has the same range distance, we can assume that our data is isotropic and we are going to have a circle instead to have a ellipse. As you can see, the information we have in this graph for this line, we have uh, a semi-variance that is changing with the distance. Then here we have the same information. The semi-variance is changing with the distance. Also for the 90 degrees and also for the 135. Then the, the 135 is going to be a point over here, from here to here. And as more uh, radius you have, better is going to be your ellipse. Then when we do the Kriegen interpolation, stay to use a 
omnidirectional semivariogram, maybe we are interested to, to use the major uh, axis as the experimental semivariogram to have a better Krieger interpolation. But that one is going to depend on a lot of things. And when you are doing Krieger interpolation, you have to try different methods and see what is the one provide the better information. But we are cover that kind of things in a later video. The last thing related with the variography is why we have an image that it's a kind of mirror image with an opposite uh, angle direction. The reason is because, I'm going to show you, when we calculate the azimuth angle, we calculate just in one direction, but we have the same information in an opposite direction. And that's because we have a mirror image over here. Now let's see how it works, the, the beam direction on a map. Now let's go to see how we can create the cloud semi-variogram for a specific direction and also how we can, can calculate the experimental semi-variogram for the same direction. I created a bin and the characteristics of this bin is that we have a lag tolerance of 7.5 meters as you can see here. Also the lag distance is 15 meters and we have 30 lags in total. If we multiply the lag distance but the number of lags, we are going to have 450 meters. That is the maximum distance from here to here to make sure we are covering all the area. Then for the bandwidth, I decided to put 150 meters and you want a very wide distance because you want to cover all the area, right? And also for the azimuth tolerance, I decided to put an angle of of 22.5 degrees. That's the angle from here to here and also from here to here. Then if your intention is to create a semi-variogram directions for every 45 degrees, you want to make sure that the azimuth tolerance is 22.5 for each size of your bin, just to make sure you have a totally covered of your area. As you can see here, we have uh, zero degrees, we have 45 here, 90 degrees and 135. And when we place here an angle of 22.5 for each size of the bin, we have a uh, totally covered of the area. Then for an example, I'm going to use the bin with a direction of 135 degrees. And I'm going to see what pair of piezometers I have for each lag. Then I'm going to start with piezometer one and I'm going to place this one as the origin over here. Then what I can see is, for example, that piezometer one with piezometer 44 are making a pair on lag four. Piezometer one and piezometer 23 are making a pair on lag six. Even the angle between, for example, piezometer 1 and piezometer 23, it's now 135 degrees. We are going to consider that this pair of piezometers, the angle is uh, 135 degrees because they are in this beam. Okay. Now, with this information, we want to create a table. I make this table here as example, and I put just five lags and until piezometer five okay then what we want to make here is for example piezometer one and piezometer 44 making a pair on lag four that's what we saw here right piezometer one with piezometer 44 and lag four and we have to do that one for for all the lags in this direction with piezometer one okay we don't have more here because i did until number five and from lag one to lag five, we have just one piezometer that it's uh, 44, as you can see here. The next one is going to be lag six, that is piezometer 23, but it's not in, in this table. But you can make a table with all the lags and with all the piezometers. 
Then for the next one, in piezometer two, let's see what happened in piezometer two. Then let's go to place the bin on piezometer two. And we can see that piezometer two and piezometer 20 lag in number four. And also piezometer two with piezometer 44, they are making a pair in lag five. Then piezometer 2 with piezometer 20, they are making a pair in lag 4. And piezometer 2 with piezometer 44, they are making a pair in lag 5. And then so on for piezometer 3, 5, 6, uh, until piezometer 57, right? Then when you have this list, then you can plot all the lags. And then you are going to have the, the semi-variogram cloud for a specific direction. Then if you want to have the experimental semi-variogram for that direction, you have to calculate the average of the semi-variance and also the average for the distance for each lag. In that way, you are going to have a point of information for each lag as I show you at the video four and also fifth. Then that's the way you can calculate it, the, all the semi-variograms uh, manually and also using, using the map, okay? Thank you very much for watching this video and see you on the next one.